That's a tough one here at Xfinity Center as Maryland falls to Seton Hall, 78-74. I'm Wayne Viner. That's Mason Viner. Bruce is away from the camera this evening. Terps just could not get it done down the stretch. Offense failed, started to foul. Not a good look for Maryland, Mason. No, not, not at all. Um, there's a lot to say tonight, but right now I, I really can't put it all together. Just, just not a good game and really not a good performance. Look, Maryland was down early. They come back, take the lead. It gets into the 50s. They lose the lead and really just couldn't catch up down the stretch. Kale, Powell, and Gill for Seton Hall were pretty good. Um, but look, we're supposed to have four-star, five-star talent. Yeah, some of it's young, but geez, you got to execute better than that. Couldn't hit a free throw. Maryland was plagued by having to shoot free throws tonight. Missing front ends of one and ones. An exciting team to watch, but just don't really have it together. And once again, too many times when you were afraid the shot clock was going to go off. Did you have that feeling? Not as much as I've had in the past few games, but I'll go back to what you said about the talent. And it, Seton Hall is a well-coached team. They didn't oh, they have are. it together early this season. Will but they've is a come good back. coach. They've come back. They've beaten Kentucky in a neutral site, and now they've beaten Maryland. So you're seeing the more developed, the better coaching, the, the more in-game feel from a guy like Willard from Seton Hall compared to Mark Turgeon. And then, you know, as much as Maryland could get it together for a few years, now they look just completely oblivious to situational basketball. Now only has four fouls and a half. Five to shoot. Meyer Consulting Engineers. In the past five years, our organization has completed over 1,300 projects in the U.S. and abroad, including many structures at the University of Maryland. For structural engineering and materials testing and inspection, call Meyer Consulting Engineers. You got good players. They don't run the plays. They keep that's something that, that I, but I don't think that's happening anymore. I think they are running the plays. Well, they're moving they're running, off the ball, and they got they didn't get a bad shot here. Ayala had a good look, but it just it didn't go in. Well, I tweeted out earlier. Ayala's been deadly from beyond the arc. I don't want to turn this into a bash Maryland uh, post game show, but we're getting closer. <laughs> because I mean, I don't know how long. I don't know how long you can really hold off on something like that. Because we sit fairly close to the fans. You yeah. hear them yelling during oh, the game. There was a guy right there that was screaming at Turgeon when he re went off the court. It, it's sure. showing. It, it's coming apart a bit. Yeah, I, I can certainly see that. Uh, we'll talk about the, the stats and the score sheet and what's coming up next. But, yeah, this is not a good look. 78-74, the hall over the Terps. This is the Viner Four Gates postgame show. We'll be back in a moment. Terp Talk is brought to you by Viner Four Gates Consulting. Call Viner Four Gates for all of your IT needs. In the D.C. Baltimore area, you could reach us at 301-251-2900 or on the web at www.vinerfourgates.com. Back here on the floor at Xfinity Center looking over the score sheet. A lot of Terps played a lot of minutes. In fact, Turgeon went with the bigs with both <coughs> Sticks and Fernando in together for a long time there. We've said before that they don't play together that much or as much as you'd like. Now they do and you wonder what a couple of guards would have looked like instead of all the bigs. What do you take? Uh, Seton Hall's a pretty big team. They got a 7-2 guy. They play big. They they matched up with Maryland, and that that's something that I don't think anybody's tried to do yet this year. But it, it works pretty well for Seton Hall. It does. And they're primarily a man-to-man -man team. Willard plays man-to-man -man very well. 
they went zone to try and, and slow Maryland down. And at the beginning of the game, it worked. On the score sheet, Cowan had 15, and it came down to the Anthony Cowan, can you make the last shot roll again? Didn't work out tonight. Wiggins didn't play that much. Two points in 18 minutes. Ayala, Fernando, and Smith, 34, 36, and 36, and Morcel played a lot in the second half. Uh, Powell had 27, Kale had 23 for Seton Hall, Fernando with 19, Ayala with 13, Cowan with 15, and Smith with 14. Usually you have that kind of balanced scoring, you can get it done. What did Maryland in? 12 of 20 from the line, 8 of 25 from beyond the arc. The Hall goes 8 of 21 beyond the arc, 18 of 21 from the free throw line. She so said you can't put this off forever. If the coaching doesn't pick up, you're not sure how the team can get that much better. Yeah, I, I think that puts it that puts it um, favorably towards uh, what needs to happen here. Is they just they have to get better. You're looking at the Purdue game, you look at the Virginia game, and you look at this game, and I'm sure if we actually looked over the over the tape, you would see the same things going wrong, the same end of shot clock situations, yep. and then the, the lack of movement when they get the ball on an inbound play that that's what's starting to stick out you see teams that run like I, I guess the football word would be quick hitters yep. from out of bounds plays and Maryland doesn't really have those doesn't really do it but uh, we can talk about this on the Young Terps podcast we have another podcast coming out tomorrow yeah it's a, a short break and uh, the Terps are off again until Next Saturday, uh, when they take on Radford. Yeah, that's that's not that's not an easy one. Radford's knocked off what I believe like four power, yeah. uh, power six teams. five six. Yeah, and when I said, look, you know, Maryland has Seton Hall, and they have Radford, and the Big Ten starts. And on the radio the other night, you said, now hold on a second, Seton Hall and Radford aren't pushovers. You got one of those right. Wow, uh, it's Radford, then Nebraska as the Big Ten starts up, and then in two weeks on Saturday at yeah. Rutgers. One more thing about this game before uh, we say goodnight here on the post-game show. I'm not sure if you saw this, but the way this game started, really sleepy, small crowd. Yep. It seemed like everything was off, like from the music that they were playing in the stadium, just there was... Right, the music was, was too loud for not that many people here. There was just... Odd game. It was really odd game, weird, but it was start. really entertaining. But by the time, by the time it was over, it seemed like any other game here. It's just that doesn't favor Maryland. That's what you're starting to see. Maryland needs to get out. They need to get running, and then right. speaking they of having to get places, we have to get to the post-game press conference. I'm sure that'll be a short one. Uh, Bruce is away from the camera today. This has been brought to you by Meyer Consulting and Jews of Rockville, Viner Four Gates of Rockville. This is the Red Turtle Productions post-game show. I'm Wayne. That's Mason. We will see you after the press conference. We're going to stay around and talk to some of the players. Good evening.